moon shadows are darker. I know what you're thinking, how does that work when the sun is the source of light for both objects? It's simple, while the earth has an atmosphere, the moon doesn't. The atmosphere of earth protects us from various things but, it also scatters the emitted light so we only see things in a certain way, which is why many people think the sun is yellow instead of white. For the moon though, it doesn't have that, it has no atmosphere so the light is more purely put into the moon, meaning that the shadows are a more pure shade of black than they are on earth. Moon dust can kill. No, I'm not joking here, this was almost proven in the worst way possible. While it's true that the Earth and Moon have many similar properties, one of the biggest differences is how the ground particles that make up the surface are shaped. Our ground is soft because of the water and thus it isn't very harmful. But on the Moon, with no atmosphere, the components of the ground are sharper, much sharper. So much so that astronauts told NASA that the Moon dust was actually tearing into their Moon boots and even messing with their visors. Harrison Schmidt from the Challenger flight actually inhaled some Moon dust while he was back on the ship and it almost killed him by a lunar hay fever. The moon dust was later studied and revealed to be capable of killing lung and brain cells. The United States thought about blowing up the moon. I wish I had been in the room when that happened. I want to hear the discussion of, hey, why don't we try and blow up the moon? To be clear, this did happen in the 1950s. It was in the midst of the Cold War, and the US was losing to Russia in virtually every way that mattered. Back then, the idea of a show of force was more palatable than taking a loss to the Russians. So, more years after creating atomic and nuclear weapons, they thought about blowing up the moon to show the Soviets that they were still top dog. This was called Project A-119. Transient light phenomena are among the most exciting and enigmatic mysteries observed on the moon. These events are bright flashes that appear on the lunar surface and are characterized by briefness and high luminosity. Transient light phenomena have been observed for centuries but only in recent years have accurate images and data been captured for study. Despite advances in lunar technology and exploration, what causes these flashes is still unknown. One of the most accepted theories is that meteorite impacts on the lunar surface produce transient light phenomena. These impacts generate a lot of energy released in the form of light. However, scientists have also observed flashes that do not appear to be related to meteorite impacts, suggesting that there may be other causes for these phenomena. Another theory is that electrical discharges produce flashes in the lunar atmosphere which, although very faint, exist. Studying transient light phenomena is essential to understand the moon and space better. Furthermore, these flashes may have important implications for future exploration and colonization of the moon. Although much remains to be discovered about this mysterious phenomenon, research continues to advance thanks to constantly improving technology and space exploration. Lunar Exosphere Believe it or not, the Moon has an exosphere, the outermost layer of the lunar atmosphere, located around 1,000 kilometers above the lunar surface. Unlike Earth, the lunar exosphere is highly tenuous and mostly comprised of charged particles known as ions and electrons. The lunar exosphere is a hostile environment exposed to solar radiation and solar winds, which can affect its composition and dynamics. The ions and electrons in the lunar exosphere result from the Moon's interaction with solar radiation and winds. This is a place of great interest to scientists because its study can help understand better the interaction between the Moon and outer space and the atmosphere of other celestial bodies. Furthermore, the lunar exosphere may have important implications for future exploration and colonization of the Moon. One mission that has helped study the lunar exosphere is the Lunar Atmosphere and Dust Mission, Environment Explorer or LADY, launched by NASA in 2013. The LADY mission was designed to study the atmosphere and dust environment on the Moon, including the lunar exosphere. The data collected by the LADY mission have helped improve its understanding and importance for space exploration. Volcanic activity although considered extinct on the Moon, has left behind evidence that it was once a much more active and tumultuous place. Volcanic activity on the Moon is believed to have begun about 4.5 billion years ago, shortly after the Moon's formation. During this period, the Moon was struck by meteorites and other celestial bodies. The energy released by these collisions caused the interior of the Moon to melt, allowing lava and volcanic gases to escape. 
Although most volcanic activity on the moon stopped about three and a half billion years ago, scientists can still see evidence of it in the form of impact craters surrounded by deposits of volcanic material. Furthermore, volcanic gases in lunar rock samples suggest volcanic activity on the moon could have continued until about 1.2 billion years ago. Volcanoes on the moon are quite different from those on Earth. They are not cone-shaped and do not emit ash but are flatter, and the lava that erupted from them millions of years ago stretched for thousands of kilometers. Additionally, volcanoes on the moon are much bigger than those on Earth due to a lack of erosion by water in the atmosphere. Unlike the Earth, the moon does not have a magnetic field of its own. Earth's magnetic field is generated by the dynamo in the planet's outer core where the movement of liquid iron produces electrical currents that generate the magnetic field. However, the moon does not have a liquid core to generate a magnetic field. Instead, the moon is surrounded by Earth's magnetic field which extends to the moon as a magnetic tail. This is due to the interaction between the solar wind and the Earth's magnetic field, producing a zone of magnetic influence called the magnetosphere. Earth's magnetosphere extends beyond the moon, so the moon lies within its magnetic field, the absence of an appropriate magnetic field on the moon has several consequences. First, the moon's surface is more exposed to the effects of the solar wind, which can erode and change the composition of the lunar surface. Second, the lack of a magnetic field also means that the moon does not have a significant atmosphere, since a magnetic field helps retain an atmosphere around a celestial body and prevents gases from being swept away by radiation from the sun. Helium-3 is an isotope of helium that is believed to be an ideal fuel for nuclear fusion. Unlike nuclear fission, which produces radioactive waste, nuclear fusion is a cleaner energy source. Helium-3 is a desirable fuel because it does not produce neutrons in fusion, reducing radioactivity risks, and making waste less problematic. The Moon is believed to have large reserves of helium-3, which have accumulated on the lunar surface over billions of years due to the solar wind. Helium-3 on the moon is found at a concentration of 5 to 10 parts per trillion, meaning there are about 1.1 million tons of helium-3 on the moon's surface. Extracting helium-3 from the moon could be a cost-effective and sustainable way to obtain fuel for nuclear fusion. However, the technology needed to extract and transport helium-3 from the moon is not yet developed and would be expensive. In addition, there is no established commercial market for helium-3, so the economic feasibility of lunar extraction has not yet been explored. Despite these challenges, the moon's potential as a source of nuclear fusion fuel has garnered interest from governments and private companies. Exploration and exploitation of the moon's resources, including helium-3, could play an essential role in the future of clean and sustainable energy. In 2009, NASA reported that data collected by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter indicated the existence of a phenomenon known as a cold tidal wave on the lunar surface. This phenomenon occurs when the temperature of the lunar surface changes dramatically in a single lunar night. The Moon has no atmosphere to retain heat, which means its surface temperature can vary wildly. During the lunar night, which lasts about 14 Earth days, the temperature on the lunar surface can drop to minus 173 degrees Celsius. During the lunar day which also lasts about 14 Earth days, the temperature can rise to over 100 degrees Celsius. However, the orbiter data indicates that the lunar surface temperature can change dramatically in a single lunar night. This is because craters and mountains on the lunar surface can block sunlight and create rapidly cooling shadow areas. The temperature in these shaded areas can rise dramatically when the sun rises again after a lunar night. This rapid temperature change can cause the lunar surface to crack and break, creating a tidal wave-like effect. The cold tidal wave on the moon reminds us of the complexity and diversity of geological processes that occur in our solar system.